Hello again, and welcome to another Unity and FMOD tutorial. Today we're going to be diving back into our footsteps script and just changing a few things to make it a little bit more efficient and run a bit better in Unity. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is, if we dive into the script, is last time we used this mathf.lerp function. Now the idea was uh, to prevent our character's footsteps from changing instantly or cutting off one of the audio files as it's in the middle of being played, we use this function to smoothly change between our material values over a certain amount of time. Uh, but thanks to a commenter by the name of Ruben Halzebosch, sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, thanks to Ruben, he has pointed out that in FMOD there is the seek speed option, which I really wish I knew about before. So to get that up, all we do is click on our parameter name and we get this option. So, what Seek Speed does is basically what we tried to do in the last video where we changed between parameter values over a certain amount of time. Uh, what you do with Seek Speed is you set a value, so my case, I've set it to three, and it says, okay, so the parameter is going to change by a value of three per, per second. Uh, with our materials, we've only got them set between zero and one. So another way of saying that is our parameters are going to change between 0 and 1 within a third of a second, which is roughly the kind of time we're looking for to make our footsteps sound smooth. So as you can see, I've already set that to 3, and I've done that for all. I've done that for wood, metal, and grass. Uh, another option you have with seek speed is this asymmetric option. And the idea of this is basically if you wanted the values of uh, the parameters to ascend and descend differently. So maybe I wanted the wood parameter to wood parameter, sorry I'm messing my words up today, uh, to fade in really quickly but take a little bit more time to fade out, uh, then well, I can do that here. But seeing as we're using these for footsteps, taking that off is fine. We'll have uh, the wood change from 0 to 1 within a third of a second, both ascending and descending, that works just fine for us. So that's that done, seek speed. Uh, if I jump back into our script, you can see I've just ignored our old lines. And all I've done is I've said when our material changes or when we detect a trigger box that is tagged with wood material, change the wood value to one and the others to zero. And I've done that with the rest of them. That's all you really need to do thanks to sync speed. So that's that done. Uh, one more thing I, while I'm here I would like to address is if I jump into Unity and play our little... Uh, character. Now, he walks across materials, that changes just fine, but if I walk off of the um, surfaces here, you'll notice that the footsteps still play even though I'm pressing W, A, S and D, which isn't what we want. If the player's falling or the player has jumped, we don't want to hear any more footsteps until the player is grounded. So what I'm going to do is quickly write a little bit more of our script uh, to correct that. So if we jump into model develop, here's our script. First thing I'm going to want to do is add another parameter. So I'm going to call this, uh, well first we want, let's make a private one, because we're just going to use this uh, variable uh, within uh, this script. So we want a private variable, we're going to make it a ball variable, because there's only going to be two options. Uh, the player's either going to be on the ground or in a trigger box or they're not going to be in a trigger box so they're going to be falling in there. So because there's only two options we want a true or false variable so a ball. And I'm going to call this player is grounded. Cool. So now we've created that variable. First thing we want to do is say okay so when is that going to be true and when is that going to be false. Uh, so what we're going to do is come down to our on trigger stay um, uh, the, the function and I'm going to add on trigger stay player is grounded equals true. So whenever we're in one of our trigger boxes, checking for the materials, it's also going to say, okay, the player is grounded. I'm also going to add another function, void, I'm going to say on trigger exit, oh, whoops, no space there. I'm just going to add this parameter, because we want that to be the same. There we go. I'm going to say on trigger exit, player is grounded equals false. 
So what this is saying is when we leave one of our trigger boxes, the player is grounded variable is going to change to false. But if we re-enter one, um, then the on trigger stay function that's running every frame will check to see that the player is grounded. Uh, okay, so that's that done. So now that we know when our player isn't isn't grounded, we need to uh, well we need to say that we want the audio to stop playing essentially. So I'm going to come over to the void update function, and where we put the if input dot get axis or if we press W A S D function, where we've put that and said player is moving, I'm going to add another if statement inside. I'm going to say if brackets player is grounded equals true. Oh, whoops, don't want that. So if the player is grounded is true, then the player is moving equals true. There we go. I'm just going to change that because I prefer um, our little squiggly brackets to be laid out like that. It just makes it easier for me to see. Uh, I'm also going to then say else if player is grounded equals false, then player is moving equals false false there we go and again I'm just going to quickly change these just so uh, it's a little bit clearer there we go so the idea of this is that our, our update function is going to check to see if we're pressing W A S L D then it's going to check to see if the player is grounded and if it is then our player is moving uh, variable is going to be true great however if we're pressing W A S L D but the player is not grounded, so we're either falling off a surface or we're just not in one of our trigger boxes, then it's going to say player is moving equals false. Uh, so we should not hear um, any uh, audio being played. If we come back down to our call footsteps uh, function, if player is moving equals false, then we don't get any audio being played. And then else if um, WAS or D is not being pressed, then player is moving is equals false. Okay, so let's save that. Let's come back into Unity. Let's give it a second to check that that's all good. Hopefully I've done that right. Yep, okay, cool, so let's play it. And I'm gonna walk up the edge and see if we hear or don't hear any audio. There we go. So I'm falling and I don't hear any audio. So like I said earlier, if, you were to, if the player was to jump, or fall off a surface, then we won't hear any more footsteps, even if we press W, A, S, or D. Uh, this character, or this movable character script, doesn't have a jump function, so I can't jump to demonstrate that, but hopefully that, me walking off the edge, sort of gives you an idea of what would happen. Uh, if we wanted to, uh, we could um, prioritize player is grounded over um, the input keys. Um, as far as I can tell, they both work the same way, so if we were to say, if player is grounded equals true, and then put if input dot get axis blah 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 blah. If we did it that way, works the same way as far as I can tell. Um, so mess around. Maybe you want to do it the other way. See if there is any other. Um, see if anything changes, and let us know. That'd be great. Um, I think that's all there is to it. Yeah. So that's all we're gonna do for today. Um, as always, let me know what you want to see, and if this was any help to you. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. So thanks for watching. And I've been Henry Scott. Bye bye.